After you finish gapping the rings, the next thing I, I usually move on to is uh, clearancing all the bearings. Uh, the first thing I do is I start with the main journals. Um, I use my dial bore gauge and I'm going to clearance the journal and see what the diameter is. So using my digital bore gauge here, I stick it in the bore here. I'm going to walk the bore gauge around and find the thickest point. I'm going to zero out my gauge. The next step after having um, our dial bore gauge set up for the journal number one right there, we're going to use our mach machinist micrometer and we're going to figure out what gets our dial bore back to zero here on our machinist micrometer to figure out the actual diameter of the bore size. So I'm going to stick my dial bore in here. I'm going to turn my micrometer down till I zero out the gauge and right there we're zeroed out. The reading that we got off that was 2.3237 inch. Um, now we're going to use the same micrometer and we're going to measure the number one journal on the crankshaft. Using the machine's micrometer you're going to mic the journal up here. Um, And it looks like our spec is 2.148 inch on the dot. And now we're going to use an equation to figure out the actual bearing thickness. Using the provided bearing thickness chart and using the provided equation, you're going to take the two numbers that we got and you're going to put them in the equation with the bearing thickness and it's going to give you the proper clearance. Using a Honda green bearing will give us approximately 1.8 uh, thousandths bearing clearance, which is still on the Honda range. Um, and we're going to move on to the next journal. Next, we're going to start on journal number two with the dial bore gauge. We're going to measure the rest of the journals, and we're going to repeat the same process and measure the rest of the journals on the crank using the equation. And we're going to calculate the rest of the bearing thicknesses that were the bearing clearances that we're going to need. The next step is to check the rod bearing clearances. So we're going to check the, the diameter of each rod journal and the diameter of each crank journal. Use the same dial bore gauge. I'm going to put it in the journal here. We have the highest point right here and the gauge is zeroed. Next we're going to use the machinist micrometer and we're going to find out what exactly the journal diameter is. Having the dial bore set to the measurement of the journal, we're going to put it in the micrometer here and we're going to zero out the gauge with the micrometer. Okay, and it looks like we're at 1.890 on the dot and that's what Manly actually machines the rod to. So we're going to check the rest of them and make sure they're all good. The next step is to measure the rod journal uh, diameter on the crank with a micrometer. Um, I'll do it real quick here and see what we got. Looks like we're at 1.7705. Using the measurements you've gotten from the rod journal diameter and from the crankshaft rod journal diameter, and using the bearing thickness chart, use a supplied equation to calculate your appropriate bearing clearance. The next thing to do is to take the main journals off. We're going we're gonna to install the Honda bearings uh, using the uh, clearances we've calculated. We're going to install the Honda bearings in the, in the journals here and install the crank and use plastic gauge to double check our calculations. So the first thing we need to do is unbolt the, the girdle and the mains here. Now that the main caps are removed, um, it's a good idea to just chase the threads 
on all the main bolt holes. Um, I'm going to be using a 11 by 1.5 mil pitch um, tap, and I'm going to just quickly go through the threads. Just make sure that there isn't anything, uh, any pieces of metal left in from the machining. Next, we're going to put. I'm going to place all the bearings um, in the journals, the respective bearing colors or thicknesses that we've measured, um, and we're going to plastic gauge just to double check our calculations and make sure they're right. With the bearings uh, in each respective journal, the next thing we're going to do is to add the plastic gauge uh, in each journal here. Break off a piece just as wide as the actual journal. Lay it flat. Now you've laid the plastic gauge in each journal, it's time to tighten up the main caps uh, in the factory sequence using the factory torque specs. The inner bolts here are 49 foot-pounds, the outer cap bolts here are 56 foot-pounds, and you go in a crisscross pattern. Now that you've torqued everything down and loosened the bolts, it's time to remove the caps. Be careful when removing the caps not to disturb the crank or it might actually smear the plastic gauge. So when you're moving it, I like to tap the caps here with a, with a mallet and, and just kind of pull on them a little bit just to get them going. Next, using the supplied chart with the plastic gauge, we're going to put it up to the journal here and see approximately where it is. And I calculate this journal to be about 1.6 to 1.7 thou, and it looks like we're right about in our range. So now we're going to look at the rest of the journals, make sure they're good. If they check out all right, then we're ready to put assembly lube and install the crank. To clean the excess plastic gauge, it's on the journal of the bearing now. You're going to use credit card or something with a nice uh, sharp flat edge and you're just going to lightly scrape just to remove the plastic from the journal so it's not there. 